from from the letter to the Colosseans chapter 2 and verse 6 the epistle of Paul the apostle of the Colosseans chapter 2 6 as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of man according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power in him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands but putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh has made a life together with him have forgiven you all trespasses having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us which was contrary to us and he has taken it out of the way having nailed it to the cross having disarmed principalities and powers he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it Amen Apostle Paul knows very very well the revelation by God the heart of man and especially the heart of a saved man a man who received Christ who called upon the name of Jesus was saved and his name was written in the book of life he was reborn he was baptized even with the Holy Spirit and walks supposedly a life which is holy in the presence of God which will lead him to eternal life because he knows very very well God Apostle Paul and God because then Apostle Paul wrote but now the word of God speaking to us the heart of man it says as you receive Jesus Christ also walk in him you've received them but how do you how are you walking now how do you walk now in him you should walk walk in him rooted not another walk which is strange left or right but in Christ rooted in Jesus Christ and built up in him your life to increase always for your faith to increase your love blessings the presence of God for sin to decrease the mistakes the faults a new building in Jesus Christ everything new in Jesus Christ and a new building a Christian does not remain halfway he increases increases and always increases in the presence of God built up in him established in the faith established in the faith of Christ not sometimes turning left and right not a little bit of gospel and a little bit of other books not a little bit of Christ and a little bit of mammon not a little bit of church and a little bit of the world this cannot happen you can't walk in two ways steadfast upon the road which is called Jesus Christ rooted on the word which is called Christ on the foundations of the apostles the foundations of Christ without looking left or right without his desire tempting him because man is not tempted by only his own desire because there is a chance for the desire to conceive and to give birth to sin and if you do sin then you are dead there when desire comes there we destroy the words of the flesh with the Holy Spirit with the Word of God that's our fight for us to remain rooted and established in Christ in the Word of God in the Church of Christ in the people of God in holiness and pureness without idols any kind of idol from calves even children and grandchildren I remember when I first entered the church I had a joy when the children came and said to me he punished me and the elders went and exhorted them 
And my children came and said to me, he punished me, he exhorted me. And I said, it's good that he did that. But I hear other parents say, you've got no right. You've got no right to punish my child. Those people who do not permit for the order to exhort the children have a complex problem. They worship their children. You will not let an order exhort your child, punish your child. What kind of idol worshipping is this? We will exhort the child. We will punish the child because we love the child. May God keep us safe, my brethren, from any kind of idol worshipping. I'm not taking a step back and you cannot insult me. I'm not insulting you. The Word of God says this. I'm not saying this for someone. God forbid. Be careful, brother. Do not prof do not prophesy as you should. You're out of the Word of God. Because I love you, I'm saying this to you. Your prophecy does not bring edification. Be careful. Whatever you have said hasn't come to pass. It's an offense to the church. Be careful. Be careful. What you say. That's why God has appointed elders in the church to take care of the souls. If the elders do not let the people unbridled, if the elders stand where they should be standing, and may God help us all to stand as we should, because the Lord is coming. When we reach this scene, the word of God says, exhort, admonish, but remain in the word, out of season, in season. My brethren, we are an army of God. We are not people without bridles. We want to be God's people. We want for angels to surround us. We want to walk in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord of hosts. We want to live a holy life. Blessed. Separated. Not, having, not only here in the church but in our houses, where we work and on the streets. You should not drive and swear. You're not excused when you see your child doing rude gestures with a hand and you say it doesn't matter to the child. No! It does matter because it might be a child now but it'll end up being a goat. My brethren, let's start a new way. I'm starting. I ask forgiveness from God. I said I repent. I'll become stricter, not with you, but with myself. I'll become stricter, not with you, with my wife. I'll become stricter, not with you, but with those who God has put next to me. Because I want to go to heaven. And I want God to ask an account from me and blood from anyone else, from my own people. That let the people of God has entrusted you with unbridled. You will repent and then it will be too late. Now, now that you can, now repent. Now repent. And if we make that decision today, it will be a day of blessings for us. Today. And I want today to be a day of my blessings in my family. I'm saying this the truth. Dear Christ, I want today to be a day of my blessings. I want today for me to sanctify myself. And I'm saying this for all of us. I want today to sanctify myself and put myself into your service as you want me to be. With strictness for me. With strictness in the Word of God. With strictness in the presence of Christ and the Gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't want for me not to discipline my body and to bring subjection and for me to preach to others and for me to be disqualified I don't want any member of my family to be out of the rapture of the church I don't want this I don't want no child of mine not my brother-in-law, son-in-law, daughter-in-law to be out of the day of the rapture and I don't want any of my brethren my sister or brother we want all to leave for heaven my brethren to enter richly, full of glory Let's make each one of us. It's a personal decision to make, but I can plead with you. I can exhort you. I can say the Holy Spirit is saying this right now. I will say, say it so I can help you. But let's make that decision for today 
to be a day of blessings a day to be a day of devotion today a day of strictness in the word of God for ourselves I don't want to weep bitterly now I want to weep not then now I want to mourn not then now I want to cry out Lord spare your people spare spare my family my children my life spare my brother for so for us because it's sure that we stumble in many things no one is without sin no one can stand this hour before Christ and say I here I am reward me I'm without sin we, we can all say here we are forgive us forgive us we can all say this here we are repent we repent show mercy amen a day of blessings a this Sunday, August 2004, let it be a day of blessings for each one of us separately. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. Let's not anyone deceive us, our hearts deceive us. My brethren, there's nothing greater bigger, more precious than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's adore, worship the word. Let's submit ourselves to the word, obey the word. It's the word of God. It's Christ himself. You will not become more educated if you learn more things. Remember the tree of the knowledge of good or bad and repent. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ will save you. We don't need to know many things. What will we become? Illiterate? No! Literate! Our children will be educated, but we will not know things of the world. We will be ignorant about sin. We will be ignorant about fornication, adultery, about evil, all that def defiles man. We will not let evil things fill our hearts, flood our hearts. We will ask for holiness and pursue peace with all people because we want to see the face of Jesus. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. You don't need anything else. You need something else to add to yourself. You need salt and pepper. You don't need a bit of world, a bit of sin, a bit of idol worshipping. You don't need these things. You are complete only in Christ. Complete. You lack nothing. I am the good shepherd and David cries out the Lord is my shepherd I will not I will not lack a thing I shall not want you will not know now a bit of this and that no brethren Christ is enough Amen